Well, hello, I'm Dr. Shate Haynes with Card to Heart Truth Ministries, and this is your encouragement for the week. It is our privilege to be able to bring this word to you, and we know how much we need the word. So let's go ahead and bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for Holy Week. We thank you for what you've already done for us, God. And we pray that the message today is going to remind us that the message today is going to reform us, that the message today is going to change us based on your word. Lord, we need you and we need you more so each and every day. We need your principles. We need your image. We need to see you in everyday life. We need to experience you. We need an encounter. And with that, Father, we want to then be able to help others encounter you too, so that they might be able to go out. Encourage our hearts today. Lord, speak to me and speak through me so that others might also be changed. It's according to your word that we do pray and lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, today, we are still in the I Am Building Something series, and this is our final message. This is part 13, and we are in Nehemiah chapter number 13. Seems appropriate, right? So let's go to the reading of the word for today. And I'm going to read all of it today, but I'm going to expound just a little bit as we go through. The Bible says, at that time, the book of Moses was read publicly to the people. The command was found written in it that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever enter the assembly of God because they did not meet the Israelites with food and water. Instead, they hired Balaam against them to curse them. But our God turned the curse into a blessing. That's a good news right there. We have to remember that God does turn our curses of our past into blessings of our present. When they heard the law, they separated all those that, of mixed descent from Israel. Now, before this, Eliashib, the priest, had been uh, put in charge of the storerooms of the house of our God. He was a relative of Tobiah. Now, you remember Tobiah was one of those that was trying to bring down and stop the working of the wall. They were trying to keep it in ruins. They provided distractions and determinants that wanted destruction for what Nehemiah was doing. But he was a relative of Tobiah and had prepared a large room for him where they had previously stored the grain offerings, the frankincense, the articles and the tents of grain, new wine and oil prescribed for the Levites, singers and gatekeepers, along with the contributions for the priests. While all this was happening, I was not in Jerusalem because I had returned to King Artaxerxes of Babylon in the 32nd year of his reign. It was only later that I asked the king for a leave of absence so I could return to Jerusalem. Then I discovered the evil that Eliashib had done on behalf of Tobiah by providing him a room in the courts of God's house. I was greatly displeased and threw all of Tobiah's household possessions out of the room. Now this should remind us of Jesus turning over the money changers saying, you know what, my God's house is supposed to be a house of prayer and you've made it a den of thieves. He said, look, we're going to kick Tobiah out today. Oh, he threw out all of his possessions in verse nine. I ordered that the rooms be purified and I had the articles of the house of God restored there along with the grain offering and frankincense. I also found out that because of the portions for the Levites had not been given, each of the Levites and the singers performing the service had gone back to their own field. Those that were supposed to be working in the house of God were going back to doing worldly things in order to make funds or to have resources in order to provide for themselves. Therefore, I rebuked the official saying, why was the house of God been neglected? I gathered the Levites and singers together and stationed them at their posts. Then all Judah brought a tenth of the grain, new wine and oil into the storehouses. I appointed as treasurers over the storehouses, Shelemiah the priest, Zadok the scribe, and Padiah of the Levites, and Hanan son of Zechor, son of Madaniah, to assist them because they were considered trustworthy. We put the right people in the right place and we don't put the wrong people in the the right, wrong place. And we recognize that they were responsible, it says, for the distribution to their colleagues. 
Remember me for this, my God, and don't erase the deeds of faithful love I have done for the house of my God and for its services. At that time, I saw people of Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath. Hmm. They were also bringing in stores of grain and loading them on donkeys along with wine, grapes, and figs. All kinds of goods were being brought to Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So I warned them against selling food on that day. The Tyrians living there were importing fish and all kinds of merchandise and selling them on the Sabbath to the people of Judah in Jerusalem. Now we remember the Sabbath day is supposed to be kept holy. Verse 17, I rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, what is this evil you are doing profaning the Sabbath day? Didn't your ancestors do the same so that our God brought all this disaster on us and on this city? And now you are rekindling his anger against Israel by profaning the Sabbath. When shadows began to fall on the gates of Jerusalem, just before the Sabbath, I gave orders that the gates be closed and not open until after the Sabbath. I posted some of the men at the gates so that no goods could enter during the Sabbath day. Once or twice, the merchants and those who sell all kinds of goods camped outside Jerusalem, but I warned them, why are you camping in front of the wall? If you do it again, I use force against you. After that, they did not come again on the Sabbath. Then I instructed the Levites to purify themselves and guard the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember me for this also, my God, and look on me with compassion in keeping with your abundant faithful love. Verse 23, in those days, I also saw Jews who had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod or the language of one of the other peoples, but could not speak Hebrew. I rebuked them, cursed them, beat some of their men and pulled out their hair. I forced them to take an oath before God and said, you must not give your daughters in marriage to their sons or take their daughters as wives for your sons or yourselves. Didn't King Solomon of Israel sin in matters like this? There was not a king like him among many nations. He was loved by his God and God made him king over all Israel, yet foreign women drew him into sin. Why then should we hear about you doing all this terrible evil and acting unfaithfully against our God by marrying foreign women? Even one of the sons of Jehoadiah, uh, son of Eliashib, the high priest, had become son-in-law to Sanballat, the Hornite. Remember Sanballat and Tobias? Sanballat was also one of those that was trying to bring down or add the destruction and bring down what Nehemiah was trying to rebuild. He says, and so I drove him away from me. Remember them, my God, for defiling the priesthood as well as the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. So I purified them from everything foreign and assigned specific duties to each of the priests and Levites. I also arranged for the donation of wood at the appointed times and for the first fruits. Remember me, my God, with favor. The 13th chapter of the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and tonight, today, part 13, get to it get to it. See, it's Holy Week. This is the week between Palm Sunday today, as well as Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, as we call it. It identifies the untying of the cult, uh, as well as the palm branches that were then spread to the unearthing of Jesus. He left this earth to go back to heaven. It's a time for us to remember Yes, what he has done. It's a time for us to reconnect to what he has promised and what he would like for us to do. It's a time for us to recommit to the word of God and the principles of God and the things of God. It's a time for us to reform, which is what Nehemiah does here. And it is a time for us to respond. If we are going to build something, we don't just talk about it. We get to doing it. We don't just uh, start, you know, just making 
commotions, but we put into practice actions. We do something different if we're going to build. You can't just say, I'm going to clear the land and leave it there. No, we're going to clear the land. We're going to put in a foundation. We're going to erect some framing. We're going to put in a roof. We're going to make sure that it looks good. We're going to make sure the plumbing goes in, the, electric, the electrical goes in. We're going to do all of those things because we're building something and we want to then be able to occupy in building something. And I know that was a very long reading, but I want you to go back and pay attention to it. I want to just highlight a few things for you. One, if you are building something, don't forget the original plan. Whatever you are building, do not forget the original plan. See, we can get to the point where we just keep doing and doing and doing, and we forget what God originally called us to. We were designed by him. We have to remember that God did turn some of the curses of our past into the blessings of our present. We have to remember that, yes, he rained down manna from heaven, but he also delivered us from Egypt. We have to remember that he parted the Red Sea and he also brought down the Jericho Wall. He had them walk through the River of Jordan and he also delivered you and he delivered me. There is something that he's done for you in the past. Don't forget to look back over your shoulder. Your soul does not have to wonder how you got over. You know you got over because of the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You know you got over because of his word that was hidden in your heart. You know you got over because of the promises that he kept, the faithfulness of God, the compassion of him, his goodness and his mercy that followed you all the days of your life. You got over. You made it here because some hurt, harm, and danger did not come nigh your dwelling because of the prayers of the intercessors. You made it to this point. You are here because of God. Remember from whence he's brought you. Remember how you were controlled and how you were tied up and tangled up and you know, that he untied you and he gave you liberty and freedom. Remember God. Hmm. When you remember, you then need to reconnect with God's word, with God's principles, with his person. You need to have an encounter with God. I know in doing uh, the last prayer book that I did and praying through life struggles, I wanted you to make sure that you were able to express how you feel. But the whole point was for you to expound on God's word, to know it fully, to understand it so that it would transform your life. But you would ultimately have an experience with the creator of this entire universe. And then you would get consistent with having those conversations with him. You would be comfortable in communicating and you would do it on a regular basis reconnect during this holy week. Don't let it pass you by. Reconnect. And then when you discover evil, recommit. Yeah. Recommit to what is right. Recommit to all things that are godly. Recommit to doing it the way he would have you to do and recommit to letting go of some evil, but make the necessary changes make the necessary changes as you then recommit to his word. Throw out what should not be, purify and restore, and then gather in what should be and put in proper place those that should be there based on the fruit that they bear. Remember, you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Yes, when Nehemiah came in, he did some reform. He got to it. He said, you know, I see the things that are wrong and I'm going to make sure we right the wrongs today. We're not going to hold it off to another day. We're going to make some reforms. And he did something specifically. He excluded what was foreign. He consecrated himself. He says, we need to consecrate ourselves here. He expelled what was evil. He threw it out just like Jesus threw it out. And then he exalted God in giving, making sure that we acknowledged and honored who God was. And we brought back the tent. We made sure those who were serving were taken care of. He exalted God in his giving. And then he said, I'm going to execute 
God's principles. What does that mean? I'm going to keep the Sabbath day. I'm going to make sure that it's holy. I'm going to make sure that we don't intermarry because we want, we don't want to be um, yoked up with what is evil, you know, unequally yoked because two can't walk together except they be in agreement. And then we're going to esteem God above anything else. We're going to esteem his holy name and his holy principles and his holy word. We're going to do that. And then in the end, when you look back over several points within the story or within this passage, Nehemiah says, remember me, God. Remember the deeds that I did for the kingdom and not that I could work anything to be worthy of what you have given, but look at the works of my hand, the things that I have done. Remember me. Because you were the one that sent your son to die for me. It was your compassion. It was not because of my goodness, but it was because of yours. Remember my heart. My heart is to serve. My heart is, and my desire is to be pleasing in your sight, living for this audience of one. But also remember those that have done me wrong. Remember my struggle. And when you do all of that, God, just grant me favor. He showed his desire to please the Lord in everything that he did. He remembered. Yes. He reconnected. He recommitted. He reformed. And he asked for a response. He responded. God has much for us to do, much for you to do, and to whom much is given, much is required. You were designed for such a time as this, so get to it. You were supposed to be here at this time to occupy. So do it. Get right with God and get to doing what God has called you to. This is your season. This is your time to get back into Holy Week, to be you holy as the Lord your God is holy, to get right. Let's bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we want to be right. We want to get to it. We want our lips and our hips to match, God. We want our walk and our talk to match, God. We want to do what you have called us to do. We want to follow your direction. We want to be right. We are building something because you're building something in us. Help us to grow spiritually the way that you have called us to, God. Help us to be an influence on others, a positive influence. Help us to intercede on their behalf, oh God. Help us as we we even ask others to be stationed round about them so that they will be influenced positively. Let us be the ones that will be stationed round about in different aspects of life, Lord, in the place that you have called us to, in the rooms that you have called us to. Oh God, we are just asking that during this time, that as we remember your goodness, as we remember your grace and your mercy, as we remember each and every day that you woke us up just for a specific purpose, God, that we would reach commit to what you have called us to and we will respond appropriately oh god we love you and we love the things that you have called and proclaimed about us the promises we want to stand on god we want to be able to walk in all of what you have recognizing and grasping hold of the victories you have already won for us god we want the triumph Oh God, but sometimes we're in the midst of struggle. Remind us to bring it to you, that we're supposed to be anxious for nothing. Remind us that we can come boldly before your throne and ask for the grace that we need in a time that we need it. God, we recognize that you will look beyond the symptom. Oh, oh in the midst of a situation, God, and you will give us the need that we have, the primary thing that needs to be changed. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for making us whole. Thank you, oh God, for moving moving us in the right direction. We're going to always give your honor, your honor and glory and praise. We're going to exalt you, God. We're going to exclude the things that are wrong. We want them out of our temple. We want them out of our bodies, out of our minds, out of our doings, out of our actions, out of everything that is holy unto you. We consecrate ourselves, God. We esteem you highly. We exalt your name on high. And we thank you, Lord, that during this time, as we express how we feel and remove all of the fleshly desires, we then come to experience you in a wonderful way, completely, Lord, knowing that, yes, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, 
and we want nothing more than just you. Help us, oh God, to focus. Help us, oh God, to be intentional. Help us, oh God, to reach the goal in which we strive. And that is to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. We love you, Lord. We ask for your favor. We ask for your blessings. We ask in our coming and our going that you would grant us peace, that you would be present. Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. In Jesus' wonderful name, we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes. And my prayer was representative of the fact that we want to be like Nehemiah in this. We want our desire to be to please the Lord in everything that we do. Be encouraged this week that with his help, you can. Because you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. God bless. You can find us online at shantahaynes.com. That's C-H-O-N-T-A-H-A-Y-N-E-S.com. We are a division of Heart to Heart Truth Ministries and Heart to Heart Truth Foundation. Donations are welcome at ShantaeHaynes.com backslash foundation. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.